I grew up in a haunted house. I can't recall everything with clarity. I truly suppressed a lot of things that hadn't come to my memory in over a decade. My parents never experienced any of the phenomena that my brother and myself did. Well, that's not entirely true. My mother experienced some things in the house, and was always willing to believe my brother and I when we came to her. She herself had more than one encounter with the paranormal growing up. I will relay the few things that I can remember. For example, in my bedroom I had a sliding closet door that had a gap in the lowest corner where it wouldn't meet the wall. It was from this gap that I could often hear two women whispering to each other. I often dismissed the sound as I could never make out what they said. If you got closer to the sound, the further it would become, until there was no sound at all. I finally had my mom come in to see if she could hear the sound. We sat in silence, until finally the murmurs began. My mom cocked her head and leaned closer. Satisfied that I wasn't hearing things, I asked my mom what she thought it was. She said, I don't know, but you know your Aunt Debbie's house? Jason's room? I said, yes. Well, that used to be your grandma's room when we were growing up, and she would always hear a priest saying the Lord's Prayer at the foot of her bed. You couldn't hear it any other place except in that one spot. Learning that information did not alleviate any fears I had, only made it worse to know that it happened with some frequency and in different forms. Another small occurrence that I can remember is the smell of rotten meat when you first came into the house. I always imagined the walls being insulated with decaying meat instead of insulation because the smell was so horrendous. That was the image that it brought to mind. Of course, my father didn't smell it and would get angry with my protests of the house reeking. My mother would quietly tell me that she could smell it too, but didn't want to anger my dad any further over the issue. With the smell came the flies. Hundreds of flies. They would hang around the door by the dozens, but inside was worse. I remember strips of flypaper hanging down all over the kitchen to try and catch them all. If you've ever seen the movie Seven, where they enter the room of the drug addict and car air fresheners are hanging all over the ceiling, that's what the flypaper in our house reminded me of, thinking back on it. Of course, not to that degree, but in my mind, I can still see dozens of fly traps hanging everywhere. It seems like you kill one and ten more appear, exclaimed my mother once. My dad, of course, blamed us for coming in and out of the house too often, bringing in the flies. However, my aunt and grandparents that lived in sequence from us had no flies to speak of of their properties. At night, I would often see shadows from the corner of my eye peeking into my room. Sometimes, many, sometimes only one. They reminded me of Muppets and how they would jerk and move in and out of my vision. To this day, I don't like anyone peering around the corner at me. My husband once innocently peeked his head around a corner to ask me something. I gasped and got sick to my stomach. Bedtime was also when I would often have the blankets pulled off of me. My mom would come in mornings and cover me back up, laughing that I slept so rough I had pulled my blankets off. I believed this as well for a time. I would wake up in the middle of the night, freezing, and go retrieve my blankets. One night, however, I lay in bed and felt my blankets drifting off me. Half asleep, I pulled them back up. Again, they slipped. I pulled them up again. A moment later, they moved. This time I pulled and tugged at the sheets and blankets, trying to figure out what was snagging my bedding and pulling it off me. Finding nothing, I pulled them up to my chin and had a death grip on the coverings. Determined not to have them fall off again, I felt a slight tug this time, however. Surely not. That would be impossible. I gripped harder and pulled the sheets closer to my face. This time I felt a definitive pull on the blankets from the bottom of my bed. I gripped my hands tighter now, but this time out of fear. The final pull and the sheets ripped from my small hands, pulling blanket and all over my end of the bed. My eyes didn't dare move from the end of the bed as I stared in fear. I did so until longer stayed awake. 
I curled myself at the head of my bed into the smallest ball I could manage, not wanting any part of me near the edges of the mattress, especially not the foot of the bed, for fear of what lay beyond. The last experience I remember in my room at night was the feeling of something pushing from underneath the bed. I, of course, had an old wooden box spring topped with a spring mattress. It was the springs that I remember pushing upwards into my back as if something lay between the mattress and the box spring. Having had one too many frightening nights at this point, I became angry and remember punching my small fists into the mattress, declaring that I wasn't afraid. I may have even rebuked whatever it was that was haunting me. Whether or not this attempt worked, I cannot remember. In the daytime, there would often be the voice of my mother calling to my brother and I, yet she wouldn't be in the house, or having your name whispered to you as you played in your room. There was also a cold spot at the end of the hallway. This, however, was met with enthusiasm, as we lived in the southwest with only a swamp cooler to cool down the house. We would often walk in the cold spot just to get a spot of relief from the summer heat. The spot was as cold as walking into a freezer, and it moved could feel it on your face, and then it would drift away down the hall, or move down closer to the ground. We chalked it up to being some type of scientific explanation of airflow, and enjoyed the moment of reprieve from the summer heat as we passed through it. There must have been good spirits, too, in the house. I say this because I can recall my brother always wanting to go with my parents when we found out they were leaving the house, even for the most mundane of tasks. We lived about 15 minutes out of town and had neighbors sparsely down the desert street. So, when my parents left the house, you were kind of alone from human contact, in a sense. My brother was scared to be in the house without them, but I didn't mind. I can recall thinking that the house felt full, even when no one was home, so I never really felt alone. And I'm a very solitary person, so I didn't mind being alone in general. This fullness in the house is why I think there must have been good spirits in the house, as I didn't feel alarmed by their presence. I can recall times, though, when I felt the house go empty and silent. The sound of true silence is deafening. It was at these times that I would retreat to my room and wait for someone to come home, because it felt like something evil had come into the house. One time I was home alone in my room, I heard the familiar ring as silence fell over the house. I waited, listening. Suddenly, I heard the front door open and shut. A few heavy footfalls. Dad? I called out. No answer. I was more afraid of an intruder than a ghost, so I shut my door and locked it. I heard heavy boots coming down the hallway to stop at my door. I waited. Working up the nerve, I lowered myself to the ground to peer under the gap of my my door, fearful I would see boots, or even worse, a face staring back at me. I dared to look. Nothing. I laid there in the floor, watching until my family came back home. That was the last time I stayed by myself in the house for many years. The last experience that I can remember happening in my youth was the appearance of a giant black spider. I was a tween at this point, home alone, watching TV. I saw something dart out from under my bed. I looked down, startled, and saw the biggest, blackest spider I had ever seen. It was the size of a man's hand with thick legs and the deepest, blackest shade of black I have ever seen. I have honestly never seen a black like that before or since. I jumped up and watched it scurry out of my door, to the right of the hallway where the washer and dryer sat. I have arachnophobia and was cursing being home alone with this thing, as now I had to find where it went. I couldn't very well sleep knowing that monstrous thing was in the house. Pulling the chair from my desk, I threw it in the hall and stood on it quickly. I looked around the walls, then began shaking the washer and dryer, trying to scare it out of hiding nothing. The doors to the other rooms were closed, so it couldn't have gone far as big as it was. Thankfully, my family came home. I explained what I saw, and my dad went hunting with a flashlight. They found nothing, and it was played off for a laugh. They said I over-exaggerated the size of it, and it was probably long gone. 
I could almost swear it off myself if it wasn't for the color of it. I've seen a shade of black that doesn't exist. The events at my parents' house ebbed and flowed to become almost non-existent as we grew up, many things falling from memory. I've learned that when dealing with the paranormal, your mind shuts down almost. I don't know if it's flight or fight response or something spiritual. Almost like your mind telling you that you're experiencing something that is not meant for us to see, and it pulls the curtain back over that encounter so that you can go on with life unburdened. Many of these stories I had forgotten until listening to other people's tales. As much as I never want to experience another paranormal event in my life, I still listen and read about such things. I'm not satisfied with the answers I've given myself as to why it all happened. Why it continues to happen to others in many forms. My brother has all but forgotten most of the events growing up. My father insists none of it ever happened. But my brother believes, even though she too has forgotten most of it along with time. I believe that whatever was in the house had moved on to the property. As in my teens and early adult years, I didn't like being outside after dark. One time, I sat outside with my nephew, playing, make-believe games like the floor is lava, or pretending there were bugs everywhere that needed to be squashed. We played for hours as the sun set. While the temperature was nice, it was also nice for potential snakes to come out. I picked up my nephew and headed inside to play some more. Who's that? My nephew asked. Who's who? I asked with a smile, wondering where the next phase of make-believe was going. That man, he said. I froze, looking around. You see a man? I asked. "Uh Uh-huh, he nodded. Where is he? You sure it's not Papa? No, up there, he said, pointing up the tree. I looked up, hesitant, hoping to God I didn't see a man perched in the tree. There was nothing. Can you see him now? I asked, looking up. Uh Uh-huh. Can you point to where he is? Yeah, he's way up there. Way up there in the tree. How did he get up there? I don't know, buddy. Let's go inside, I said. What's he doing up there? I don't know. I... I said, moving towards the front door. Can you still see him? No, he's gone now. That was the last time we played outside near dark. I'm in my mid-thirties now, and believe that the presence has moved further away off the property to surrounding lands. I can stand to be outside when visiting my folks now, but looking past their fence lying into the dark unnerves me. One night, while visiting my parents, we took in a late movie. There's a large cattle fence blocking the driveway to my parents that you have to get out and move when coming or going. My husband's knee had been bothering him, so I parked the car and raced out to get the gate before he could move. I opened the gate and moved to sit in the car when I heard a woman whisper, Hey! I stopped and turned to look across the street into the darkness. The only thing that I could see is the large boulder that sat at the entrance to a neighbor's property. My parents are one of the only people on their country road that have a light pole illuminating their land. What is it? My husband asks. I thought I heard something, I say as I turn back to the darkness. I listen. At the time, I didn't realize it, but there was a distinct absence of sound. The same lack of sound that hurts your ears to hear it. Hearing nothing further and certain that I just misheard something, I turn back to sit down in the driver's seat. Psst! I turn back. Did you hear that? I whispered to my husband. I don't hear anything. I look once more into the pitch black dark. I remember that teens often come out here to party and think that perhaps they were too stupid to realize that they were on a residential land and are hiding behind the boulder, drunk or high. I'm not having any of it, so I shut the door and pull the car up to the house. I get out fast so my husband doesn't try to walk down back to the gate with a bum knee. I get to the gate, keeping an eye across the street for trouble. Locking the gate, I turn to see my husband standing on the porch, rigid, with his fists clenched. I look behind me to see if he sees something I don't. There's nothing, so I think maybe his ego is bruised and his wife doing mundane things in his place. 
he's not that type of person and is very slow to anger. I get up to him and stroke his arm. Hey, you okay? I ask. He stares past me back towards the gate. Are you mad I shut the gate for you? I ask. He looks at me wide-eyed. You can't hear that? Hear what? I say, leaning my head towards the night to listen more closely. He looks at me with an eyebrow raised. You didn't hear that just now. No, what is it? He shakes his head. I don't know. Let's get in the house. Are you still hearing it? Yeah, let's get in the house. He didn't speak to me the rest of the night about it. In the morning, when going over the story, he still couldn't describe the sound. Other than a mixture of sounds that was loud, really loud, and unnatural. My mother walks in on the conversation and we relay the night's events. I stop mid-recollection, remembering how dark everything was. This struck me as odd, because a mile behind the neighbor's land is a huge fracking company that's lit up like a football stadium every night. I didn't see it that night. There was nothing but darkness. My mom shakes her head, her eyes wide as we tell her what we experienced. Well, I believe it, she says, looking around to see if my dad is present. I won't tell him about it, she says, meeting my father. I was out one night and I heard a baby crying past the fence. So I stopped and listened because I'm thinking surely no woman is out there walking in that desert brush with a baby. So I move to the sound, and it starts moving in another direction. So I move toward the sound, and it moves again. Finally it moved to the other side of the property, and I said, nope, and came back inside. I looked at my husband, my mouth agape. Yeah, I told you, he said. I don't like going outside here. Screw that. That was the last major paranormal event I have had. There have been small things here and there. I bless my house regularly, or during times when I feel the mood in the house is heavy, if that can make any sense. I even go so far as to walk the property line, blessing it in Jesus' name. I don't want to experience any more paranormal activity as long as I live. I still go cold when I see a door closed and wonder, did I shut that door?